Well, hello there. So from this video onwards, we're going to dive into programming. And in this video, I'm just going to write some script for assigning shortcut keys and laying out the foundation for creating a new file. So let's start. The first thing I'm going to do is create a JavaScript file called shortcuts.js. Now Electron ships itself with a package called Accelerator that allows you to assign shortcuts throughout your app. You can learn more about it on the documentation page. Just search for Electron Accelerator and click on this link. But I'm not going to use that. I tried it but I felt that I had easier way for assigning shortcuts and I could not make it work exactly the way I thought it would work. So if not Accelerator then what? Well we're going to use plain old JavaScript. Alright so instead of shortcuts.js. First, I'm going to bind a key down function to our window, just like this, and then define a callback function for it. It takes event argument. Let's console log this event argument and see what it outputs. So save the file and reload the project. And now as soon as I press a button, you can see that in the console, we get this object, which has large amount of data. So let's see how to utilize that data. Remember, all the shortcuts that I'm going to assign are triggered only when a combination of any button with control key is pressed. So first, we're going to need to check if the user has pressed the control key. How do we do that? Well, it's simple. I'm simply going to write console.log event.control key and save it. And as soon as I reload the project, you can see that every key that I press returns a false value. But watch what happens when I click control button. It shows true. That means that we can detect when control button is clicked. And since it's a boolean, we can simply place it inside of an if block. So I'm simply going to write if event.control key and then close it off. Now we need to know that which key is being pressed along with the control key. And the way you do that is by this line of code. What this does is basically converts every single button that we click into a string and then converting that string to a lowercase. Let's see what happens when I log it out. So here I'm holding down the control button and now I'm going to press N and here in the console N appears. In a similar manner, whichever key I press is detected and returned to us. The, the box character are basically the control button itself. They are not representable in the form of string, hence they simply appear as a box. Alright, coming back to shortcuts.js, what I'm going to do is wrap this line of code in a switch statement and then target the desired keys in the form of various cases. So I want to trigger a function when control n is pressed. So I'm simply going to write case n. And we also want to override any predefined shortcut, so I'm gonna write event.preventDefault. Alright, and then I'm gonna write break. So whenever control n is pressed, we wanna create a new file. And I'm gonna write a function that does just that. Now I'm gonna go over to codeslate.js. Here's where I'm gonna define the create new file function. Just like that. And for now, I'm simply gonna write console.log new file created. Let's have a look. So I have reloaded the project. Now when I press control n, there we go, we get our message in the console. Okay, so now it's time to make some changes in the GUI. So for that, first I'm going to go back to codeeditor.html. Here, I'm going to come inside of this files container div. Now, if you look at the finished version, notice when I press Ctrl N, a new list item is appended, right? So first, I'm going to hard code this list item. So come back to codeeditor.html. I'm going to create an li tag and it will contain a span with a class close tab icon and an X. And then I'm going to create another div with the class file name span and give it some dummy text just like that. Now I'm going to give them some styles by going over to snippet styles.css. Now instead of the CSS file, I'm going to target the files container div space li. So this will target all the list items present inside of the files container div. And I'm going to set its list style to none, give it padding left to 20 pixel and cursor to pointer. And then I want to change the background color of these list items when the user hovers over them. So I'm going to write this and give it a background hashtag 262a2f and then I'm going to target close tab icon give it a color font color white font weight bold set its font size to 7 pixel set its margin top to 0 pixel position to relative top minus 2 pixel left minus 12 pixel give it a background transparent give it some symmetrical padding in this way and set its transition to all 0.1 easy and out now I want the close tab icon to change its color when I use a hovers over it. So I'm going to write close tab icon hover, give it a color 1c1 f22. Now I'm going to target this div called file name span, give it a background transparent, set its padding top to 4 pixel, display to inline block, padding bottom to 4 pixel, width to 100% and font size to 12 pixel. Okay, now I'm going to reload the project and there we go, we got our list item. Now let's make it happen dynamically. 
So go over to codeslate.js and inside of the function create new file, I'm going to create another function and call it add new explorer tab in files container. And inside of this function, I'm simply going to target files container class and append this li tag that we just wrote just like this. All right, now let's see the result. So as you can see, by default, we have this list item, which is hard coded. And then as I press control N, a new list item is appended just like that. If you keep on appending, it automatically stops at a height and the scroll bar appears. The scroll bars look hideous. So let's style them as well. Now, a scroll bar has various components. This drag wheel component is known as a thumb. The path on which a thumb moves is known as track. And the way you target a scroll bar in CSS is by using double colons followed by a webkit scroll bar. So I'm going to give it a width of 2 pixel height of 1 pixel. Now, if you have never styled the scroll bars before, you might be wondering how can I specify the height and width of a scroll bar? Well, if you are scrolling vertically, then the height of a scroll bar is determined by the content, but the width is still controllable. Similarly, if you are scrolling horizontally, the width of the scroll bar is determined by the content, but the height is still customizable. So that's what we are doing. Now, let me quickly style all the components of a scroll bar. So there's the track. I'm going to give it a transparent background. Then there's the thumb and I'm going to set its background to light gray and then on hover, change it to dark gray. And then I'm going to set the corner to transparent. All right. Now I'm going to reload once again and there we go. Everything looks much better. And if I press control N repeatedly, you can now see the tabs get appended and the new customized scroll bar appears. All right. Now we need some way of keeping track of the number of tabs that are currently open and how many of them are untitled and how many of them are unsaved. So at the top, I'm going to create three global variables, file tab count. This is going to increase per file, open tabs. This will increase whenever a new tab is open and decreases whenever tab is closed. And then untitled count. This is going to keep track of the number of untitled files currently present. Now, every time a new file is created, untitled count increases. Number of open tabs also increase and file tab count also increase. So I'm going to go into this add new function and write file tab count plus plus open tabs plus plus and title count plus plus. And I'm going to create a variable with the name file name and assign it as untitled plus untitled count. And then I'm going to replace it here like this and let's reload. Now, as I press control N, you can see we now get some numbers to identify the files. Okay, great. Now we need some coding screen to be opened as well. So I'm going to create a function instead of create new file just below this function and call it open code slate. And I'm going to pass the current file tab count. Let me quickly write some comments here, just like that. Now let's create the function open code slate and I'm going to enable it to receive an argument and I'm going to name that argument tab number. Now before writing anything, let me see if it works correctly. So I'm going to write console.log tab number and let's see. I'm going to create a new file by pressing Ctrl N and there we go. You can see on the console we received the tab number. Moving on. Remember the procedure for implementing ace.js. We simply create a div, give it an ID and pass that ID as an argument to ace.edit function. So first I'm going to create a global variable called editor ID and code stat ID for the status bar. Now I'm going to create a variable inside of open code slate function called editor design and assign some HTML to it. I'm going to write editor design equals to div class code slate ID equals to editor ID and style to editor styles. Before moving any further, let me assign some values to editor ID and code stat ID. So inside of open code slate function, editor ID equals to code slate underscore tab number and code stat ID equals to code stat underscore tab number. Basically, we want them to be same for a specific tab number. Now, we also need to give the <coughs> Now we also need to give the editor some styles. Just create a variable called editor styles like this. And I'm going to give some CSS as its value. I'm going to set its position to relative, top to zero, right to zero, bottom 90, left to zero. And I'm going to give some additional properties that we didn't give in the previous video. I'm going to set its font size to 12 PT, font weight to normal, white space to no wrap, display to none, and Z index to 999. By the way, you could have done the same thing in the CSS file as well. Then I'm going to create a variable called code stat content, which is going to contain the HTML for our status bar. And it's going to have div class current lang JavaScript. And then I'm going to append that to our editor design, just like that. And then we are going to append all that to our editor container. All right, now reload the project and there we go. You can now see as soon as you create a new file, the status bar covers the entire area. Why is that? 
because currently our code slate doesn't has any content and i'm going to wrap up this video here only because it's quite long but i know you're waiting for an editor to appear so i'm not going to go without that first change the display property from none to block in editor styles and then just write ace.edit and pass editor id variable as an argument in open code slate function now reload the project and try creating a new file there we go you can now see that we have our code editor now you can remove these lines of code from codeeditor.html in fact you can copy these two lines and paste them here just like that although don't forget to create a variable called editor um, that's it go over to the project reload it and now you can create a new file although there are several issues for example if you try to open multiple tabs the status bar begins to stack over one another that is because we haven't told any one of those status bars to disappear i'm going to resolve that issue and add more stuff in the next video you can get the corresponding code for this video from my github repository linked in the description below and select the branch part 9 if you have any doubt please leave it in the comment section and make sure to like the videos as it motivates me to keep going also if you're new to the channel then make sure to check out the series and hit that subscribe button if you're interested in programming related stuff so till next time